Norman, one of the issues that comes up when we're talking about clean energy policy, even climate policy, is that in order to create policy, you need data. And apparently Canada's data is not great. Could you address that, please? No, indeed. Canada is very bad at data. I mean, the approach that we've had had at, the, at Statistics Canada, for example, is essentially every data is private unless... Uh, you can anonymize it and make sure that nobody can ever recover it in some way. So, and if you look at the US, for example, uh, the Energy Information Agency has the opposite uh, mentality. Every data is public or are public. And if you want to uh, hide it, you have to go and justify to the IEA that you want this information to be uh, private and you have to justify why it needs to be. So Canada has been deleting data, for example, StatScan has been deleting data about energy. If you have mergers, for example, of two companies where we lose, then we lose, for example, uh, enough companies to, to have information about coal or about other uh, energy sources, and it's not available. Same thing for, I would say, a lot of the utilities. It's very hard to get information from utilities, information that is public elsewhere. So utilities here say we have to protect it for confidentiality purposes, for competitiveness or for uh, no, uh, safety reasons. So why is it so important here and not out of the border in Europe? That beats me. But we have very little information. This information is also often very long to come and it's not stable. So we remove information historical information as fusions, mergers appear, as some uh, market uh, change. And uh, we are therefore very uh, ill-equipped to really understand this transition that we're facing. That's fascinating because here at Energy Media, we uh, use a lot of U.S. Energy Information, uh, Energy Information Administration, EIA data, <clears throat> and they make it very, very easy to get that data. They publish uh, every day they publish stories with graphs and links to data. Whereas if you go into the uh, either the Canadian Energy Regulator or the Stats Can pages, it's buried so deep in the web in in their sites that it's very difficult to find. Even something simple as you know how much uh, oil and gas we export and where we export it to in the United States. I think it's, it's better because there's been a creation of a, a, a energy. Uh, statistics, uh, forget the name, energy data uh, web page that has been uh, collecting the data and making it much clearer, but the data itself hasn't been improved, hasn't improved. So we now have uh, a desk that does pretty good job at Statscan to collect the data, but the problem is that the data we're collecting is often insufficient, is often limited in, uh, in scope. Okay, well, that, that's a serious problem. Um, now, one of the arguments you make in the, in the report is that we need to collect different data, different uh, clean generating capacity, number of EVs sold, number of heat pumps installed, that sort of thing. Could you explain why that's important? It's more than only collecting. We need to use it in the sense that over the last, I mean, decade or so when, we, when Trudeau government embarked on uh, really reducing emissions, the goal was really on counting tons of CO2. Uh, and that means doing marginal work. For example, there was a lot of effort, and still today, about clean fuels. So essentially, you put a bit of uh, biofuel in your uh, gasoline. This is really marginal transformation. It's not structural transformation, but it does something on uh, at, no, rapidly decreasing emissions. What we're saying is that we should instead focus on transforming the energy use, the technology. So we should not focus on tons, but say, how many EVs are we putting on the road? What's the fraction? Are we reducing the number of uh, cars with uh, fossil fuels? Same thing for heat pumps. Do we understand what that means? If we want to get to the 2035 targets, for example, we would need to install heat pumps in 6 million residential units, okay, over the next 10 years, 600,000 a year. That's the numbers we have to focus on, not are we reducing emissions, and that means by focusing on these number and these transformation, we can develop much more efficient strategies and validate you know, year after year, six months, every six months, are we in line or not to achieving our objectives? 
One, uh, th there's also interesting data that you think should be collected on things like uh, clean energy versus fossil energy price parity. And I think in, in terms of just as an example, electric vehicles, um, there is data in other statistical energy about total cost per kilometer traveled, for example, and it's easy to find and not the case in Canada. No, the, we, we lack a lot of this data. And this data is also important because the focus has to be, I mean, for a long time, the economists have pushed, we need to raise the cost of carbon so that we push people to other technologies. But what we see around the world is that these electro technologies can become extremely competitive in price and often cheaper than the fossil fuel uh, based technologies. But for this, we need to track these prices and we need to develop, therefore, strategies to lower these prices. And lowering can be done through many tools. Of course, the price on carbon is a way of shifting the balance. You can also subsidize, or you can work at making, for example, some supply chain, some uh, installation cheaper and more efficient by the way of structuring the local and the underground, the, the, uh, all the ecosystem around a given technology. And we've been focusing so much on cost of carbon that we forgot there are other ways to get there. But if we want to do this, we need to understand that the price, if you wish, of an electro technology, which is a car, is not the same when you compare with a fossil fuel car, then heating, heating in one province is not the same as this another. How do you handle this? And for this, you need real costs and real prices. What matters at the price at the end for the consumer. That's how we have to think about it. And we need to develop strategies, build on this to get people to shift without remorse. Let's talk about the American experience again, because um, we use uh, or we um, interview about studies that are done by the American government's big laboratories, like the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. And they have hundreds of economists on staff and they produce these very, very detailed studies, same with the Department of Energy in the US, that then become the basis for policymaking. They have the data to do good policy. And so then you, you know, your policymakers are supported. And that does not seem to be, there doesn't seem to be a link between uh, data collection, analysis, policy that I see down in the US. That's right. We don't have at all this, uh, this habit or this tradition, which is sad. We have people in the government who could do that. I mean, we have CanMet Energy, for example, which has a lot of extremely competent, I mean, more than competent, no, exceptional researchers there. They know what's happening, but there's no connection or clear connection. And there's a big fear in Canada of publishing report, of publishing data, of doing comparison, because you can offend one manufacturer versus the other. You could look like you have a preference. So all this means that we're not doing the work that we should be doing, even though we have the capacity, we have the people, and in many case, we have enough information, not the same richness of data as in the US, but enough to be able to move in Canada. But we, have, we are so afraid of information in Canada that really limits the way we build strategies that are efficient. I want to tell you about an, uh, an anecdote from an interview I did with uh, Jorge Vague, uh, Varga in the US. He runs Aspen Power. And he said, uh, look, uh, our company does, uh, we put in uh, clean energy systems behind the meter for uh, industry and big commercial operations. They, they want that security. And he said, uh, American made solar panels, digital controls, and batteries are more expensive than China, but they're still cheaper than the alternative. And the real um, value or the real cost here is integration. That's the thing now. It's not the cost of the hardware. It's the software part of it. It's the, it's the human part of it. Uh, permitting and, and skills and efficiency and all of those kinds of things. And it strikes me that you kind of need data to understand the, that particular trend and then craft policy to support it. 
I totally agree. And this data has to be you know, province specific because of the way it's done in Canada. So we need a lot of data, a lot of specific data, but we're not going this way. We're going in the opposite way. We're reducing the amount of data available in Canada. We'll see because we're cutting services where we'll be cutting in government. And the first thing you cut are things that appear to have little value and data is one of it. And even big companies, now I'm thinking of Hydro-Quebec and other utilities, their understanding of what's happening behind the meter is extremely weak. Now there's no solid program to build knowledge about this in order to be able to build the proper programs, the proper tools to implement uh, strategies of decarbonization, for example. Uh, Norman, I, I make the criticism all the time here at Energy Media and have for a while that our energy conversation in Canada is kind of immature and stunted. And it's often dominated by the oil and gas industry, for example. And, and it seems that another uh, variable here would be the lack of data and information. I mean, you literally have nothing to talk about because we don't generate the data and the reports to have those conversations. That clearly doesn't help. And what we do then is we turn elsewhere for data so we look at California, but California is not Canada. There's a bit of difference in terms of climate, for example. So a lot of the solutions, a lot of what we see there, we tend to import directly because we cannot have the access to the reflection here in Canada. Also in Canada, we are very weak in even publishing data from pilot projects and trials that is that are happening across the country. So we cannot build and construct an internal, uh, I would say, expertise that is needed to move forward efficiently. And details matter when you want to lower prices on these technologies. As you said, the issue is not buying the panel. The issue is how you install it with the regulation, with the details. And to know this, you need people who have not the type of expertise I have, but the one of people who work on the ground and understand this. And you need to be able to bring this information at the right level to develop the, the policies and strategies that are appropriate. Norman, if I waved my magic wand and was able to make put you in charge of that at the federal government level, what would you do to fix the problem? <laughs> I mean, I think we first need, need information. We need to understand what's been happening around the world and compare. We do very little comparison in Canada about what's happening elsewhere uh, in what is relevant. So let's start, stop comparing with Florida and California or Australia. It can be useful in some cases. Let's compare also in similar climate, similar issue. And we also need to be strategic. So my point is that we need to focus on transforming the system and getting prices down and getting prices down through subsidies, direct but much more interesting often is subsidies to the distributor, people who do installations, and then you have much stronger control on the progress and you can follow much more. Are we getting where we need to be? Uh, and also use this to do economic development. How do we use this knowledge? Because doing it well means we're building knowledge, we're building capacity, we're building expertise in Canada that can then be exported if you, not everywhere, because in some places we're so behind that we'll be just doing catching up. But there's still areas in this transition where Canada could be one of the countries at the forefront of the transformation. And then we need to build, we need to build the scale so that we need to make sure that there's enough mergers and enough capacity that these people will be able to play a role on the international market. And this we don't do at all in Canada. Norman, uh, I'll finish up the interview this way. Uh, today is November 4th and the federal budget is being released uh, this afternoon. And the uh, Prime Minister, Mark Carney, has promised us uh, clean energy industrial policy and industrial policy of, uh, uh, you know, in a greater sense. Uh, and we were talking about things like national, uh, uh, you know, a national power grid, for example, uh, or an electric vehicle strategy. But it seems to me uh, based on the conversation we're having, is that all of those strategies, all of the policies to support them and the regulations that put the policies into motion need data. They need information. And would we expect that maybe what we're going to get today is a little vague, it's a little, it's not strategic, it's not focused, because we just don't have the data and the information to do it. And we don't have the will. Again, 
Statistics Canada has, by law, the capacity to demand data from industry, but they shy away from this, and every time they want to move a bit further, they do it by, well, let's sit with every industry, make sure they agree, instead of saying, that's what you have to do, deliver, and let's move on. So it's extremely slow, and typically it doesn't deliver the data we need. Norman, this has been a fascinating conversation. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.